one of the first steps in our running our electrical circuits is going to be setting our boxes. There's a process to do this and we can't run our cables unless we know where they're going to terminate, which would be in our junction boxes. I've made this mock-up in our classroom here. This is sort of simulating a wall and we're going to set a box in here that would accept an outlet. So I'll go ahead and make a mark at 12 inches up and I'm going to make the mark at 12 and 3 quarters. The reason for that is I want to take into account our finished floor which is typically going to be a 3 quarter inch thick material say like hardwood. So this will be the place where I'll mount my junction box and I'm going to go ahead that's going to be the bottom of my junction box. It's often that code would tell us if we had to set our boxes they need to be a minimum of 12 inches off of the floor. That is one code that you might hear and might have to adhere to. So I'm going to hold this box up against this stud. This is the placement that I like and as you can see I've set that box forward of my stud using these stops on the box here. I'm using those up against my stud. That's going to hold it forward which will account for some finished materials like drywall later. So I'm going to hold it on my mark and I can set those nails tap them in. Now the box is going to hold itself. I can go ahead and drive those nails in all the way. So when those nails are tight, I don't need to go any further. If you drive those nails too far, it's going to start to deform that junction box. So you want them tight, but not too tight, if that makes any sense. Now it's time to run our Romex cable. So we're going to have a run of cable and I'll take this piece here and what I'm doing here is I'm setting an outlet in this box. So this cable according to my plans is going to come in from the top and now this cable needs to come into this box in the back in one of these knockouts. So at this point I need to open this knockout in the back and I'm going to do that with just any tool we're going to pop it out and that is going to free up a space to pull our Romex through. If I have a choice of opening up a knockout, I always want it near to my, the, the closest one to my framing, if, especially if I only have one cable. And we need to pull that cable through so that I have a good six to eight inches forward of the front edge of the box. This will give us enough length of conductors to work with to attach to our device then push it all in, pack it in so we can finish this off later. So my next step, now that I have my cable run, is I need to secure this cable to my framing. We need to drive our staples in around our Romex very carefully. We don't need any damage to the jacket and we need a couple of staples in this particular circumstance. We need one just as the cable leaves the box within 12 inches of the box and then if we have any length of cable after that, we need one every 54 inches, no more than that length for any other runs of cable. Driving our staples is critical. As you see here, you're looking at some bad examples of how cable can be damaged by a staple that's driven improperly. The one on the top left is driven too far. You have pressure on the conductors inside. This one is starting to shear or damage the conductors and the insulation of this Romex cable. The one in the middle on the right, the, the uh, one side of the cable or one side of the staple has actually pierced the cable. This could be shorting out any conductor inside and turns into a fire hazard. The one at the bottom is obviously driven poorly. The staple is not driven straight and it's going directly through the conductor. So none of these are ideal. The, the ideal one would be the slide before and that would be the one that mounts nice and solid and securely to the cable. So let's go ahead and put a cable in as this staple or as this cable leaves the box. I'm going to go ahead, you want your cable flat to the stud that you're working on and I like my staples a little closer than 12 inches and I'm going to go ahead and set it and now I can drive it and I'm going to drive it 
until it grabs that cable and no further. So I'm not overdriving it. We want it in there nice and straight. It needs to hold, but not damage that cable. And we'll go ahead and put another staple in. Code says that I'm not, I am definitely not over 54 inches here, but I'm just gonna put another one in to hold this nice and tight to the framing. So I'll go ahead and set that staple. Now I can hold the wire flat against that stud and I'll drive it in. As you see, I've used two different styles of staples. They both do the same thing. And now I have two staples driven, I've got a nice tight wire, and I have a very secure situation here that I can then finish it out. Let's talk about removing the Romex jacket to get to the conductors inside. This is an important step. Then we can finish out those conductors. First things first, we're going to put or cut a slit down the center of that Romex jacket on the flat face of the cable. That is going to be the beginning of how we'll strip it. Once we have that slit in the jacket, we can peel it open and we can reach in and pull those wires out. There's no reason to cut all the way through to the end of that jacket. We can bend and pull those wires out and save us that extra step. Once we have separated the jacket and the inside wrapping from the conductors, it's time to cut that jacket off. And it's important to cut most of that jacket off, but leave, say, an inch in the junction box. You don't want any of those conductors exposed outside of that junction box. Let's go ahead and demonstrate that here on our mock-up. So I'm going to pick a place that is an inch away from the outside of my box, and I'm going to run my knife down the center of this cable. I don't need to go any further than that. I don't need to put this hand in any danger with the knife. That's enough of a slit that I can then open it up and I can pull these conductors out. So as I'm pulling them out, I'm separating the jacket from the conductors. You're going to have some paper wrap in here. You can pull that over with the jacket. And once I get those separated, I can then reach in here and just cut my jacket off. And I need to make sure that I'm not cutting any of my conductors or through any of this insulation on them. Now I've separated my jacket and I have my conductors ready to work on those. I need to prep the ends of these conductors. I know that I'm putting an outlet in here and that outlet is going to have three terminals that I need to connect each one of these conductors to. So I know, based on the information we did before, I need a hook on each one of these ends. I'll go ahead and strip these two ends that have the insulation, and I'm going to bend a hook in each one of these. This is also 14 gauge wire, so I'm using my 14 gauge stripper notches. And I'm stripping back about 5 eighths of an inch. I'm going to go ahead and bend a hook on my neutral. I'm going to bend a hook on my hot wire. And then I'll bend a hook on my ground wire. There's my three hooks. Now all I need is my outlet. And we need to do, attach our wire ends to our terminals in a specific sequence. That's always going to be, we're going to start with our ground. We're then going to go to our neutral. Then we're going to do our hot wire. We're always working in that fashion just in case we have a situation where we have live wires that we didn't know about. And this could save our life. We're putting our safety uh, features in first so that it could help in an emergency. So I'll go ahead and hook my ground wire onto my ground terminal. We want to make sure that we get this turned in the right direction on our terminal. And I'm going to hook it on there. I'm going to add some tension to it. And I'm going to twist or tighten that terminal screw as tight as I can get it. I'm watching that wire wrap around. I've got a good tight connection there. 
Up next, we're going to work our neutral wire. That's the one after the ground. And we're always going to attach our neutral conductor to our silver terminal. I have two terminals here. I can decide either one will work. So I'm going to use this terminal here. I'm going to go ahead and attach my hook, put some tension on it. And then I'm going to tighten this screw as tight as I can get it. I should see that wire start to wrap around it. That's a good solid connection. It's also good practice if you have, you're going to have an extra terminal on both sides. Go ahead and tighten that one up. It'll give you some more room in your box when you pack all this into your junction box. So now I'm going to do my hot wire. So I'm going to work this side of my outlet. So the hot wire is going to come in and I'm going to put that one just out of good practice. I'm going to put it on the same terminal or the same lower terminal as I did my neutral wire. I have to loosen this terminal. It happens to be tight. And we want to make sure that we get this turned the right direction. So we want it, the hook pointing in a clockwise direction. We'll go ahead and hook it on. I'm going to add some tension on this. And now I can go ahead and tighten that terminal screw. We want it nice and tight. And then we're going to tighten up this other terminal screw so it's out of the way when we pack all of these wires in. We have all of our conductors connected to our outlet securely. Now it's time to pack all of these wires into the junction box and secure this outlet to the junction box. Let's do a quick review of our connections to our outlet. We're always going to start as a good habit when we're running electrical we're going to run our ground first. That could be a wire to wire connection or a wire to terminal connection. And on a terminal, you can identify your ground terminal. It will always be green. Your ground wire will either be bare copper or it will have a green colored insulation around a copper conductor. Your next conductor to use is your neutral. This is going to be a white wire and you're always going to connect your white wire to a silver terminal. Next up, we're going to do our hot wire, which is going to be our black wire. It's going to connect to a gold colored or a brass terminal. Let's talk about packing all of our wires and our device into this junction box. The reason we have extra wire is to make it easier to pack this box. Short wires become very difficult to get put into the junction box. It also makes it harder to work on the device while we're attaching the wires. So we're going to start to fold or accordion these wires into the box slowly. You want to do this making sure that you're not stressing out your wire ends on the terminals because if you do this too violently or aggressively, you're going to loosen those connections or you could even break a wire. So as we're packing them in, we're pushing this outlet closer to the junction box and we're going to line it up to where we finally are going to use the screws on the device to screw it tightly to the box. This is the point where you want to make sure that you've aligned the device straight so when you finish this out later you're going to have uh, an outlet that's not crooked or skewed. So here I have my extra wires. I'm going to start bending and folding these wires in and I want to make sure one thing to think about is you've got a bare ground wire here. You don't want that anywhere near your hot leads or your black wire connections. So make sure that your ground wire, if you're paying attention to it, it stays away from those, any of these other terminals. So as I'm folding this in, I'm kind of starting to get this outlet lined up and straight to where I want it. And I'm going to go ahead and start lining up these screws. I have two screws that should be already attached to this outlet. I'll go ahead and get one set and then I'm going to line up this bottom one. So I've got two holes in this junction box. I've got them lined up and I'll get these screws started. There we go. And I'm going to tighten them up. And as I'm tightening them up, I'm going to go ahead and push this outlet in and kind of hold it where I want it to be. Take some of the tension off these screws and now I can go ahead and tighten these up. These are what are going to hold this device to this box. Keep in mind, there's something missing on my mock-up here. 
we would not be putting these outlets in before we put drywall in. So we'd have a finished surface here and the ears of this device would be catching on our drywall. I'm going ahead and installing this so we can get the idea of how this would go. But this phase of the electrical process would only happen after all of that finish work was done and then we would come in and put all of these devices in. So I have one more screw here to finish out and we're going to go ahead and tighten that one up. We want this box to be, I'm sorry, we want this device to be straight. I'm going to start ignoring the box and start looking at the wall and things around it. I have a little bit of adjustment in this outlet. I can move it around. I don't want it too close to any one side, but I want to make sure that it's straight. So as far as plumb, let's say, and that's going to be a good installation finished. It's nice and tight. It's not moving around and we are done with our outlet installation.